We grew up in an era where there's mm. groups like Nucleus, Jam On It, Egyptian Lover, mm. World Class oh. Wrecking Crew, right? Then there's you all had that stuff like on the elite. Then you had Run DMC, you had T La Rock, you had all these different street interests. So we grew up on yeah. on electro, street soul, and these kind of sounds. So I don't think what we've done is far removed from where we come from. It's just that it's very well, adult it, 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 and very yeah, this whole thing is from where mature. we come from. Yeah, exactly. It's undeniable. Exactly. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com Fox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. I feel, I feel vulnerable. Not today. I'm exposed. I'm out. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct central London or as central as you need to be. Want to be, deserve to be. You don't want to be anywhere else. Believe that. Uh, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Big shout out to strangestation.co.uk. Nopolandrecords.com. And everyone that's been sharing the journey over the last five years, 270 episodes. And if you want to catch them, we'll go television, app free, download, iPhone, Android, for your street culture sports. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's actually a real esteemed pleasure, this, because. Um, not only are they making my kind of music, but the kind of music that's being made is by two people that uh, have, have been a part of my journey as an artist for a long time. And to, um, to be asked for them to come on it was such a huge pleasure and an immediate yes. Um, nomadic poet, part of the Planets crew. Yes, alongside sir. a good good dude of mine, Mr. Part 2 Graffiti Riot and producer. Gentlemen, how are we feeling? All good. All good. <laughs> Summer again. He's upgraded now. He's now known as Particle 2. That's the one. This really? is the upgrade, the 5G <laughs> really? upgrade. Well, it wasn't my idea. It was the beginning of a track. It was the beginning of a track, he says. Flomatic Particle 2. And I'm like, okay, he's just playing around with our names. Sign me just, up. Some reason, the next minute you're like, oh, you need, you should just use that name. I'm like, oh, do you know, I might as well. It's, I'll it's take, you'll take it, you'll take it. <laughs> this is all part of a bigger, a bigger, much more grandiose project called Hawk. Hawk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm going to show you now. For those of you listening or watching, you're missing out on a great treat. Here's a screenshot. Check that out. This is the CD. It's been given to me. I'm fucking stoked, boys. Thank you so much. As somebody that has uh, listened to the album a couple of times in different guises, um, damaged rib have I, but I still went to the gym with it and I then listened to it a little bit later on in the background while doing the podcast. Um, I have to say, it ticks all of my boxes so far as um, almost like astrological feel meets like right. a rare groove right. kind of, I don't know, Jill Scott style soul. Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, does it, does that's hit good. The... I like There's it. There's a lot of fusion on Red there. Groove. And um, I think it started from <clears throat> me and Keith having conversations about the kind of music we both grew up on. Mm. So even though Keith's at the other side of the country, I'm down here, we shared a lot of the same kind of experiences growing up. Mm. Um, in the UK, I think if you grew up in our era and you were out in any kind of big city or whatever, you'd be exposed to UK street soul, rare groove, reggae, dub, hip hop, that was all part of the culture. And um, my background is sound systems and, and Keith, I mean, I'm sure Keith can fill you in mm. on his background, but um, yeah, we spoke about that and then we decided to kind of incorporate all the kind of music that we were kind of into. It, it really happened organically. Um, and the first track, funny enough, was Divine Alchemy, which is the title track. And um, Keith was like, I've got some beats. Let me play you some beats. He played me this beat. And I was like, yeah, I could do something with that. He's like, I don't know what you make of this. I was like, don't worry, just send it to me. <laughs> and then um, we did the first track and it, it kind of set the pace for the direction. I mean, for me as a writer, what I do is I have concepts sometimes and not only like have the beats ready or whatever, I, I would just have these kind of topics that I want to address. So when the right beats come along to match the topic mm. I'll write to them so I've had these ideas in my head but not the lyrics but the direction of what I wanted to do and Keith is just that guy for me Keith is like a phenomenal producer 
Mm-hmm. And, and he's he's very futuristic with what he does. Um, he says, no, nah, this ain't futuristic, man. This is just like... That's because no, it's just what he does, Keith, isn't it? Keith is not <laughs> your regular <laughs> guy. <laughs> Whether it's art, music, whatever, Keith is not your regular you guy. I don't understand you play something to somebody I mean, and they're like, that's yeah. so futuristic. It's like, whoa, it's just... It's just pedestrian. Well, uh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. binary. You wait till I'm up to 20, then it's a whole different <laughs> yeah, stratosphere. People that might be familiar with my past stuff with planets, we just kind of like fuse that, that new flesh vibe with planets, with where we're at now in the world, with, you know, what mm. society's been going through the last couple of years and just mm. our experiences as adults growing up, family men, you know, just, yeah, spirituality is like, the spiritual world meets the physical world, meets the metaphysical world, all of that. We just And I have to I do have to I do have to break for a second because we're talking to two characters that if you if if you're familiar with the British sound that, that was emerging through the late nineties within the, the the course of Big Dada, Mo Wax, um, you know, I I guess wine art productions, jazz fudge, um, ninja tune, I said that. Anyway, uh you guys are definitely part of the tapestry. Mm. The planets was, of mm. course, yours, and um, and of course, new flesh for old. Mm. Um, the northern uh, quarters of of mu- music that, that for mm. me just really stood outside of the, the British pack as well. You know, um, I think your production really holds a lot of uh, a lot of weight um, where that that era was concerned for both of you guys. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm. It's trying to trying to hold some gravity in place, mm. like you say, weight. With that bass, mm. but at the same time, escape gravity, all in one. And that's trying. That's a hard thing trying to get that balance between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, Very much so. Um, but let's let's take a step into this album, and it's just some bangers like "Breathe," for instance. That's a killer. Um, just you know, these little hints of um, uh, hook and chorus, which actually mm. when you listen to it on first reference, you're like, mm. oh, that's cute, but mm. then it sticks. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And mm. it's, it's a, uh, uh, um, you mentioned sound system. Mm-hmm. Um, and Because the, the, I know you, you, you grew up heavily around yeah, the Yeah, I was system. involved in sound systems. I started in what you'd call, if anyone knows about sound system, you know what a box boy is. So I started out as mm-hmm. a box boy, the guy who carries the scoop bins mm-hmm. in the back of the truck. That's, OG that levels. was my role. OG levels. <laughs> that was my role. Then I, then I, I was kind of like messing around with my friend's um, uncle's 45s. He'd be playing versions, my friend would, and he'd be like, yo, no man, flash a lyric. And I'd bust a lyric, bust a lyric, and be like, you're good, you know, you, you could, you should come on the sound. So the sound was called Reva, and then later on uh, became known as Loveline. They used to play all around West London and North West London, playing oh. Carnival and everything. And um, yeah, it still was a, a, a legendary... Um, things that used to happen on Stonebridge Park Complex and St. Raffles Estate. There used to be all dayers in the late 80s, early 90s. And um, they brought me up there and there was a lot of famous people. There was like Sweetie Irie, General Levy. The whole of North West London was there. <gasps> and that time I was called Apache. And um, everyone knew me as Apache. And they put me on the mic for the first time and I was crapping myself. Like this little short Asian guy, I was about 14 years old. But I like... 10,000 people. I'm like, shit, if I mess this up now, I'm going to get bottled. Because that was the era where if you are crap, you're getting bottled Mm -hmm. or whatever. And I went up on the mic and no lie, they must have wheeled me up about 15 times. They wouldn't even let me finish my lyrics. I still got the tape at home. I need to dig that tape out. Damn! But yeah, but after that, that was it for me, as far as the sound thing. But I've always done the rapping and the reggae thing side and side since 83. I've been involved in it. Wow. Yeah, so I've gone through many different phases and been parts of lots of different groups along the way and stuff. So yeah. but here I am now, man, doing this thing with Keith. We've known each other for a long time since the um, early early nineties. Yeah. Early nineties, yeah. Funny enough, I heard Keith stuff before I met him on one of Disorders tapes. I think it was when he had these UK Hustlers tapes. Mm. And um, big up Disorder, of course. There was a new Flesh for All track. I think it was called. What was it called, man? I think I remember you telling me this. It was Mesopotamia. M- Mesopotamia. That's Mesopotamia, it. man, changed That's my an independent. life, bro. Yeah. That's an independent track as well. It was before kind of pre-Big Dad. Yeah, it was stuff. on that Jazz Fudge compilation, I remember. It. Yeah, we put it out ourselves yeah. as a 12. That um, shit dumbed me in. Yes. I loved it. And I was like, who's this guy? Mm. I think Disorder hooked me up with Keith's number and I called him. I was like, yo, I like what you're doing, you know? Because mm. <laughs> it just reminded me of myself because I like people that are 
yeah. straying from the norms. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it pushes your creativity. Yeah. That record Keith, wasn't the norm. Keith, <laughs> Keith is just that type of individual. Right ways. So I love it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, here we are now, man. I'm really proud of the project. I think it's um, tapped into a different side of me as far as my writing. Mm. Keith's music kind of opened the keys. Like, these, he gave me the secret keys, opened these chambers, mm. and the pen just started flowing. That's it, man. So that's what it is, man. It's, yeah. But it's still down to earth, like... It's just kind of like, I don't know, it's like inner conversations yeah. brought to the page. Yeah, I kind of went down down a bit of a path as I was listening to it. And, and you know, I think it comes with an, an, uh, an age and grace because when you've, when you've cut your chops and you've got your stars and stripes on your, mm. on your chest and you've, you've really gone the course of, of a musical, creative musical career, mm -hmm. you can sometimes afford to be a lot more experiment. And then actually, not, more, mm. not, not just experimental, but you mm. can actually take a few things out of your toolbox that mm. you thought to yourself, mm. oh yeah, I got that. Mm. And next thing you're applying it back into the music, yeah. fresh again. Mm. Yeah. You must get that all the time in production. Yeah. yeah, I think sometimes you can listen to it in a different way. I mean, it sounded completely different when I listened to it in this format as a product. Mm. When I put the CD from this product back in and played it again, it just sounded, I could hear it how maybe other people could hear it. Mm. But when I did it, it was always kind of swimming around in my own mm. consciousness in terms of my memory of doing it in the same year. How much time did you give yourself before you could stop? We started I, it around May so, last okay. year. So, oh shit. So and how I think we mastered it in December. I can't remember yeah. quite when we finished, but it we was quick. It. it was quick. It was December. like clockwork. Once the first track was done, mm. it's like every week you'd be, we'd be talking about ideas like, okay, Keith would be like, okay, what kind of, what do you think? And I, because I'd have these concepts in my head, but I need the music to match the concept to mm. take me to that place. Mm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I nearly, so, gave, I nearly gave up. So I know Keith, <laughs> I've done his head. <laughs> I sent him like Sorry. three beats in a go he's and he's like, none of them. But then for some reason I got one to stick and everything I sent him after that yeah. was never debated. Yeah. Fucking I hell. don't know what yeah. happened. Yo, yeah. what you was just, it? You, we just it was, but the first few thing? things I'd be like, it's not even trust. I don't know, I was just throwing things out there just to see, see what he'd feel. And um, he'd be like, oh, just give me something different. So I'm like, okay, something different. So yeah, yeah, case, yeah, let's yeah. just see what, see what his response is. But um, mm. he'd be like, yeah, that one's not quite my thing. And then I'm a bit like, oh, right, well, I'll send you some more. But after that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got, I got, I think I just sent one. And after that, I only ever sent beats in ones. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was always then the case of, um, next time I'd speak to Nomadic, he'd be like, yeah, yeah, I've already got it written. Or, yeah, or he'd hit me up going, oh, yeah, I've oh, written okay. the whole track. I'm like, what? I only sent it yesterday. I love it when rappers <laughs> do that, man. I know within five seconds, so if I hear the beat, it just, I know already, yeah, that's going to work. Yeah? Yeah, I know straight away. It just takes me literally five mm. or ten seconds to hear the beginning of a track, and it will take me to that place. Yeah. And I'll be like, yeah. And I think you've got to start getting a few under the belt before you start to recognise what your aesthetic is and mm. what it is you're actually doing, and to you know to get that feel of what what our sound is, because that don't come straight away just from nowhere. Mm, yeah. you know. I do you feel like there's an undertone of some social commentary there? I mean, mm. the, you know, some that would stick out, but you know, in terms of lyrical value yeah, yeah, yeah. and songs, it's sure. like you. you I, I think I think it, it's actually re, re, mostly poetical. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way that you alternate between that, you know, there's, mm. there's, it's definitely a sit down, listen. Yeah, yeah, for fair, sure, isn't it? For sure, it's a, <clears throat> it's one of those albums. I think you need to listen from beginning to end to really appreciate it and really look at the cover as well and kind of sink it in because there's a lot in there, and you, it's layers to it musically and lyrically. So when mm. you listen to it, you're gonna get different things at different times. Some of it is a bit out there in terms of. Like, because spirituality and, you know, my environment, the sound system, all of that, I fused all that together and that's a crazy mixture. Mm. So there's a track on there, um, What They Know, which is basically that's the heavy. sound yeah, that's uh, the kind of the thing. Um, story. There's lots of different feels in there. Um, mm. But yeah, it's just, it's just a whole journey. Yeah. I think it's like a whole journey. If you listen to it from beginning to end, it takes you somewhere. Mm. Well, that's what I'd like the listener, or we would like the listener to get from it. Yeah. Um, that was the the thing. But it was all organic, the way we did it. It was just kind of like, a 
all right, next track, next track. And, and it just kept flowing nicely. Did you do the artwork? All... That's mine, yeah, it's a digital collage. It's heavy. It's what happens when you go go crazy, right? Clicking images on, on um, Google. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, guys, like you know, this this cover yeah. in itself is, you know, it's got Max Headroom, um, <laughs> from Max Headroom to Mr. Blobby, uh, Mark Pen's Sweet Corn, Nuclear Bombs, <laughs> the Shard, yeah. um, lots of drone yeah, activity. Land, landfill of old yeah. computers. Yeah, I mean, this in itself this is important. Is, I can imagine yeah. this looks dope on a fucking record on vinyl. Yeah, when I did it, um, I actually when I put the piece together like this whole section of the artwork mm. i kind of did it like um 24 inches by 24 wow so that if i want to use it as a 12 inch sleeve mm. if it ain't if if i throw it in and it pixelates it's coming up but if i throw it in and you can't go up and only down mm -hmm. it, i think the experiment was to keep everything it only goes down because if you go up once it pixelates you've had it so it's a case of putting everything in at the exact size so that yeah. when you pull it down to say an album sleeve size 12 inch mm. by you know, 12 inch square to a CD. It compacts it in that. Yeah, you bag. know you ain't going to have no issues with something just looking completely crap. Because for those that don't know, and if you are not familiar with the podcast, part yeah. two's been on previously as mm. graffiti writer extraordinaire. I mean, you. But, but it's an understatement when I say how fucking dope you are and your contribution to graph. Um, from, I mean, the, the photorealism alone was way ahead of its time. And you couple that with even now there's some pieces down on the on, on the riverside which are still, still there. there. Yeah, it's still there. The that part big, two that one. chrome. Yeah, that big chrome's the, still there. Bro. Under the Westway bit. Uh, it's just a beautiful thing to see. I mean, this was, you know, this was that 90s era look and you were definably... I think like, it's still there though because they yeah, put a fence in front of right. it. That's right. Well, yeah, but, but then... <laughs> when the only reason <laughs> no one bothered to go over it because you can't quite... <laughs> you can't quite get a full piece on it but this yeah. is, you know, this is, this is where this is where you come to yeah. your own, you know, like <laughs> everlasting. So you can't quite make contact with that wall so it stays there until somebody pulls the fence off. Exactly. What's the graph scene like for you at the moment? At the moment, I've not, really um, not really been dealing with it. I've done some art stuff you know over the last few years but I haven't really been um doing that many walls mainly this year I've been doing a lot more community projects mm. working with young people in places like Ipswich um Peterborough different parts of Suffolk and uh, just kind of living away from the city at the moment just enjoying the um, countryside and nature and naturalness you know mm -hmm. so um Is that a, yeah. was that a choice was that a kind yeah. of choice to get out and... yeah totally yeah the way this this whole world's going at the moment I'm just like yeah do you know what I don't want nothing to do with you your technocracy and your your transhumanism and mm. all this other stuff. I'm just mm. like, yeah, give me give me some nature. And uh, they're trying to buy up nature now, as as everybody knows. Mm. You know, let's buy up some land so we can grow a load of synthetic mm. food there that will make the land uninhabitable to grow food ever again. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. where they're going with it. It's a scary time. Anyway, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, you're right. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know what? This has become a more pressing conversation. Mm. I mean, we don't want to go too off the beaten track because. Mm. Um, as, as the world burns in, in many respects, like mm. I just feel there's a uh, disparity between um, technology, social media, mm. and how we actually live as as people. Mm. Yeah, and it just seems to me there's a distrust, mm. um, self entitlement, mm. um, apathy. There's a lot of these qualities mm. that we're well, not in qualities. There's these horrible, uh, you know, they're just coming out of people yeah. in. in I mean, I think the album addresses a lot yeah, of this in quite definitely. a few of the tracks, especially in um, a track like What the Huck, mm -hmm. and also Reap What You Sow is mm -hmm. is um, a track, because they're the two tracks I actually do vocals on, mm -hmm. and um, it's really addressing this whole thing like, yeah, the farmers in general, you know, like you're saying about mm -hmm. oh, what's going on with the graph scene, whatever, but I don't know, man, I'm more, I care more about uh, the farmers at the moment, because mm -hmm. they're the people who feed us, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and people talking about food shortages, and what was it today? 2.3 billion sent to the Ukraine. What? Which is apparently what's supposed to have caused the food shortages and the crisis in the first place. As, as you know, that's like not, wow. not quite, quite the full picture there, is it? But um, why would you, I don't know, why would you sanction a, co a country that controls most of the world's grain, fertiliser, gas? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, there's only one one group of people you're sanctioning and that's your own mm. your own society and your own people living in your nation and this is global worldwide it's kind of like mm. 
some crazy philistine globalist mm. stuff going on right there and i don't want to be sounding like russell yeah. brand no no but i'll be real with you <laughs> if if music is not a reflection of the culture and sign of the times mm. you know what we what, mm. what are we speaking for yeah true enough. yeah, yeah. i think the album like you said addresses a lot of that it's about like me and keith have these conversations all the time about we're going further and further away from actually being human, our human mm. nature, just even walking out, appreciating the air, appreciating the trees. That's why the track mm. on their trees have eyes. That's a, mm. it's, it tree. sounds funny, but it's, it's about kind of like we pass trees every day and we don't realise how important they are yeah, to yeah. us. And, it, you know, trees are living creatures. And the whole concept behind that was if the trees had eyes and they could speak mm. and they would talk about what they've seen humans do, yeah. The planet, what would they say about us? Because they've been here. I mean, the eyes from, is a good way of, yeah. uh, it's a great way of um, putting that into a visual yeah. sense. But what you're really talking about with trees is very much like clay. Mm. It has memory. It mm. remembers, right? Mm -hmm. So the trees, nature has that kind of memory. And um, I think, you know, tracks like that are, are an important way of addressing something that, yeah, if you ain't paying attention, you need to. Because don't be paying attention when you're starving. You mm. know? No electric, oh, no you'll means of cooking something. Now. Yeah. You'll be paying attention now. paying attention then. Because mm. <laughs> you send another two point three billion to the Ukraine, then you can guarantee those prices are going to double and double and then keep mm. going that way. Mm -hmm. More than double. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, are you you're very spiritually minded, aren't you, nomadic? You. I try to be. Yeah, I, 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 I always I. From my recollection of mm. the planets, mm. there was definitely a conscious mm. drive sure. with that project sure. as well back in the day, wasn't there? Sure. Tell us, tell us a bit more about that in its time, because there are a lot of people out there that will, will know well, you from. Those for those times. that know or don't know, I was born Muslim, so obviously Islam plays a, a big part in my life, and that reflects in the music. So, <clears throat> yeah, that, that that's kind of like. How I approach music is is kind of like a conversation. I don't really look at it like I'm preaching to people and trying to convert them to my way of thinking or whatever. It's more of a conversation mm. um, of my journey. I've seen a lot of things in my time. I grew up with a lot of different people, five percenters, nation of Islam, Rastas, Hindus, Sikhs, Jews. I've been around all kinds of people. Used to go to all kinds of different meetings from a young age. I had a thirst for knowledge and... Um, I just like to share that with the world. I'm still on this journey of learning. I think we're all learning. That's kind of like where I got the name as well, Nomadic Poet. It's like life is one journey that we're traveling on and we're learning along this journey. So we never all know it all. So I'll never act like I know it all. I'm just, I'm just trying to be a human and share my mm. human journey. You're a conduit. I, you're a conduit to, to, mm. to the music. You're a conduit to, you're, you, you're, you react to the things around mm. you and you, you, you speak yeah. that part. Yeah. For sure. That's mad. I love that. Uh, does because you guys are, are the same age and ilk. You grew up yeah. within the the uh, hip hop, as 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 mentioned, um, of its time. Uh, you you also kind of grew up through the eighties sure. into the nineties. Um, does that play a big part in a, a bit more? I, I, I don't know. A, a a more measured philosophy where it comes to uh, striking a balance in certain tones and temperatures of songs within within the mm. project you know like for instance you would someone from Covent Garden for instance is it the kind of thing that you think someone of that age now mm. would appreciate this sort of thing more mm. or is this is this designed for a more specific kind of clientele for me I haven't designed it for anyone but anyone who wants to hear it I mean yeah. I'm from that era and I'll, I'll be straight up with you. I used to be one of these, I'll say, hip hop extremists. Be, where, yo, it's got to be SP12. It's got to be 950. Yo, I saw you in Hip Hop Connection, my guy. I know. <laughs> it's got to be. You were hip hop, bro. You it's like, got, you it's boom, got to be on two, two inch tape. Look, people who know me will know that, okay, Nomad is a guy you hear him on Golden Era, Boom Bap type beats, right? This is not that. But it's not removed from that because at the end of the day... It's got like the I elements said, there. Yeah, it's got the elements there. Like I said, we grew up in an era where there's mm. groups like Nucleus, Jam On It, Egyptian Lover, mm. World Class oh. Wrecking Crew, right? Then there's you all had, that stuff like on the Elite Then you had Run DMC, you had Tila Rock, you had all these different street interests. So we grew up on, yeah. on Electro, Street Soul and these kind of sounds. So I don't think what we've done is far removed from where we come from. It's just that... It's very adult well, it, 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 and very... This whole thing is from where mature. we come from. 
Yeah, exactly. It's undeniable. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that's, what brought, that's what brought us to here. But if you just want to hear the same tempo and the loop mm. going around, you ain't going to get that on this project. Well, that's my experience of yeah. back in the day growing up in the 80s and stuff. Clubs didn't really play things on the same tempo. Mm. You'd kind of get like a little bit of electro or hip-hop or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you'd get kind of street soul mm. towards the end. And then, you know, even going into like probably later dates, like 87, whatever, you'd have a bit of the house mixed mm -hmm. in with hip-hop, with the soul... You know, they'd have like, I remember going to things where you'd have like um, that kind of house thing, then you'd have a hip hop act, and then you got someone like Sybil from the mm. US doing mm -hmm. Don't Make Me Over or something. And that was in Donna places Allen like Bradford. Something. Yeah, it was people like Unique Free used to run a lot of systems up mm. there. Unique DJ Free. Mink, Mongoose. Mongoose used to do a 10 p a pint night in York. Yo. And, um, used to have all kinds of stuff going on, but yeah, you always all kinds had of that trouble mixture. by the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was bits of that. I think they, there was another room. Yeah. So this was like a smaller room and then everybody stayed in that room. But you would get them wandering in. There'd always be someone getting knocked out somewhere along the line. It's, I can't lie. I love goes. that. I love that. And, I, and not that I was I ever played a part in it. I never went to the shows. But, you know, just as a kid watching TV at the time when music <clears> was only available for me like that, you know, the street soul stuff, and I'm talking, like I said, Don mm. Allen, um, uh, I mean, SOS band, mm -hmm. you know, these oh, kinds yeah. of, um, oh, what's her name? Is it Princess? Princess, number one? yeah, she did. That was produced by Pete Waterman. Yeah, that's Stock Acre Waterman, yeah, I'm not saying that. <laughs> but, you know, these are beautiful. And yeah. then when you couple, couple that with, you mm. know, the Run DMC mixed mm. with, you know, a bit of, mm. you know, Egyptian Lover, mm. I mean, it really is a concoction. Well, yeah, and, and hip-hop wasn't such a kind of... Um, set formula back then and mm. even when you go past the electro days into like big daddy kane or marley you know you could you could get producers like marley marl and he would sound different to say what bdp were doing mm. or to say what 45 king was doing with lacking shabazz or something mm -hmm. and you had everyone had these different sounds like next plateau label they had a different sound mm -hmm. and you had people like ultra magnetic or whatever ultra way, way All the, yeah mantronics had a completely mm. wow. different sound and and that's kind of how I remember it and that's mm -hmm. part of my the fabric of my DNA mm -hmm. so when I approach a tune I'm not looking at what people are going to think of it like when you ask the question I'm like so people from Covent Garden what would they make of it I'm like I don't even know man they probably just want to put the atmosphere back on again dancing out of space or something you know <laughs> I don't know maybe they just want to listen to that still among other things I don't I do know I have no idea I, what people make like of it really as an artist you have to challenge yourself mm. as well I mean mm. Lyrically, I'm not saying anything that you haven't heard me say before in terms of it's just the flows and yeah. the, the the direction I've taken it is more deeper into that, more deeper into the philosoph philosophical, spiritual kind of element and also taking it back down to earth with, like, for example, the reggae track where I'm talking more from the sound system background, mm. bringing it back to earth. So there's a lot of different layers to it. And um, But do you, yeah. do you not think that... Um we're always in danger of trying to make music that we want to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's always a risk, isn't You know, it? <laughs> you're always kind of thinking, what is it that I want to hear when I go, mm -hmm. out, yeah. or when I put the radio on? What, what's missing that I'm, I'm not getting, you know? But I do feel like, I mean, <laughs> it was a double-edged, you know, I, I kind of had my own answer mm. for it. I was curious to know what you guys thought. Mm. I do agree with you. Like, mm -hmm. if you aren't forward-thinking in your mm. hip-hop and you've mm. gone through this... The, mm. all these periods and times of mm. your life, mm. whether it's American hip-hop British, whether you're American or mm. British, it's like sometimes you just need to get out of that shell. Mm. And I think that's why genres like drum and bass flourished for a lot of the producers and DJs mm. that were into hip-hop because they were just like, yeah. they transferred over drum and bass because it was yeah. more progressive. Well, that's mm. the thing. Where does hip-hop end? You know, people mm. seem to look at it from such a retrospective point of view. And really, when you look at all these other things like even dubstep or broken beat and all these, they all kind of come out that same nutshell. Mm. Somebody cracked open the nutshell and all these different things mm. came out of it. And, you know, what what we were doing in the 80s, breaking, mm. b-boying, mm -hmm. scratching, rapping, all of these, all these things, you know, picking up spray paint, doing, Hard. you know, rocking the walls or whatever, you know. In some ways, there was a certain aesthetic based around all that. But back then it was contemporary. Mm. And what's contemporary now, you, you, you do have to take into account what young kids are doing with grime music and everything else. Because to them, they're a bit like, they don't really know much about 
the stuff we grew up on. Because no. mm-hmm. they, they, they probably grew up on kind of, like, oh, our first turn, someone brought a tape with Wiley on. Yeah. Which is like, how many decades later? Or you someone know? like Jumping Jack exactly. Frost or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Drum and bass. For, yeah. You know, there's so many different levels. And there's a lot, I've met like young, young people in record shops, early 20s. And they're buying up all the old kind of golden era hip hop stuff mm-hmm. and like, oh yeah, I'm buying this Pete mm. Rock thing and and kind of like, wow, I can't, you know, it's kind of like, you talk to them, they're like, oh, I got into grime really, but I'm more into this. I'm not, I'm not surprised. So it's going around the other way, you know. Because I remember mm. for me growing up around the sound system thing, I remember being 11 years of age going to a place called Bluebird Records on Edgeway Road. Mm-hmm. That was a spot back in the day. <laughs> and the Friday you get the imports. And I knew all the 70s rare groove tunes because I was a naughty little boy. I used to be in blues dances when I was 12, 13, <laughs> right? Sneaking out, jumping out the window. Mm. And I knew these tunes. And the guy's looking at me over the counter. He goes, young man, how you know them tune there? I said, yeah, I know them tune. Have you got Patrice Russian? Forget me nots. Have you got this? Oh I knew God, all yeah, the yeah, tunes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I had a fascination yeah. for music that came before. Mm. And I think that was mainly because of my uncle. I had a funky uncle that was into Stanley Clark. Herbie Hancock mm. and Malcolm McLaren. And that's wow. what got me into hip hop. Really. Wow. Listen to Malcolm McLaren, Buffalo Girls, World Class Wrecking. Yeah. Um, sorry, was it Last Night a DJ Saved My Life? Who's that again? Last Night a DJ Saved My Life. Um, <sighs> I've got brain freeze on that one. The name of the act, but yeah. Comment below, you know what to do. Yeah, oh God, they'll come to me in a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'd be like some Tourette's. <laughs> some yeah. Closet old age guys. That's it. <laughs> he always does, man. <laughs> I, I, I feel like the progression of, of hip hop, um, I think it I think it lies in there was a yeah like Danger Mouse for instance and mm-hmm. the way that he's um, he's worked with Black Thought. Um, I, I, this is kind of falls in kind of suit with this, you know that what I mean? That kind of vibe. Yeah, that okay. kind of guy the vibe. And and also you know people like Sonny Jim working with Buck Wild and people mm-hmm. like that. There is this there is this mm-hmm. awesome new mm-hmm. trend of trying things out from mm-hmm. an American to English mm-hmm. point of view, mm-hmm. from a boom bap rap to new kind of production point of view. And you guys as well mm-hmm. bring in that kind of mm-hmm. those kind of new aspects in, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I think even though the sound may sound new to some, but to us it's just kind of music that we grew up on. I think it still has this kind of, maybe because of our experience, it still has that kind of feeling of like back in the day, but in a futuristic kind of out there way. Yeah, very I much I don't know so. how to explain that, but... No, no, it's, it's true. Yeah, it's like a fusion mm. of, of that. Yeah, and that's why I was... It, affectionately, I, I felt compelled to com- draw a comparison from a back in the day um, era, such yeah. as, mm. you know, the big dadder, you know, the, the, the fucking Tyrannosaurus, Big Dada and mm-hmm. Moax and Ninja Tune mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Jazz Fudge and mm-hmm. all these other awesome... They were just pulling out so many, even raw, early raucous mm-hmm. records, they were pulling out some Definitely. beasts. LP is another one yeah. in, in terms of producers that mm. you just can't fuck with, like, yeah. what? You know, yeah. mm. bonkers. Um, what do you use equipment-wise? Just logic. Logic. On a laptop. Yeah? I got rid of... No outboard. Like, I got rid of the Akai and all of that kind really? of stuff years ago. Really? Just... Yeah, yeah. Well, well, we've got a way of doing things. I send in the stamps, mm-hmm. and then it goes through a desk and everything in um, Acton. Uh, yeah. Don't and then, it, then it comes back to me. Gives it that warmth. Yeah, yeah. It just to, the just to kick out the digital a bit. But just going back to what you were saying with the, the sound of it, with the the old influences in there, I think in some ways it's kind of... Coming from a place of now, mm. but for some reason it's those bits of ghosts mm. that kind of creep back in, almost like hauntologically. Yeah, little yeah. little snippets of sounds. Yeah, in there. Me- the memories and traces no. of yeah. those days are yeah. all kind of there. But those days have a you know it's a full cycle of fashion, yeah. and mm-hmm. those sounds. As I was listening to it, it, it didn't fill out a place whatsoever. Mm. Of course, we're not sitting down trying to go. Let's make this and let's put this in there because mm. this is what we're into. It's just. Just doing things and doing mm. things and somehow it's like, oh, have I got a bit of that in there? It kind of reminds me of that. And mm. You don't quite know how it got there, but it seeps in. These, mm. these kind of, it's like ghosts. They, they're there. They're, yeah. There's presence. They're not meant to be there, but they are sort of thing, you know. It's, is that 10,000 hours? Is that, is that, because that sounds very much to me like just zen. Just during that meditation yeah. or mm-hmm. just f- unfolding. That's my approach go. anyway, I think, really? is to get yeah. into the, you, get it into the zone, really. And, um, 
a bit like you said earlier, being a conduit. Mm. You know, that's what we are really. At the end of the day, conduits. You know, we're just like a medium, mm. some kind of third party medium for <laughs> the universe and the creator to just mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, channel through, and then out it comes. For real. And then um, there you have it. In your hand. Yes. It's come straight from there. Hawk. Hawk. Into your hands. Favourite tune of the album, boys. Come on. Well, you, what's yours? Oh, I've told you. Breathe. Mine. Breathe. Yeah, man. Fucking banger. Um, banger. And th- by the way, there's a, there's at least, what, 18 songs on here? 17 Ooh, on that one. Oh, close enough, wasn't I? But there's extra, there's extra tracks on this that won't be on the digital release. And mm. also, if you open it up, the extra CD... Is it instrumental? It's a full, full, di- it's a full, full instrumental. instrumental. Wow, so it's a double... It's two CDs. So you've got the full album, 17 tracks, and the whole yeah. instrumental LP. It's only a small, oh. limited run for the collectors, and then yeah. once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah, see, and I've got one. So, so the instrumentals won't be available um, yeah. like that again. Yeah. No, not for the foreseeable future, anyway. And again, that goes back to a, a very romantic time for me of, of these this era, mm. of, of where the, the instrumentals had to count, even without... Mm. But, uh, yeah, the value together is crazy. Um, favorite tune? Ooh. Yeah, mine keeps changing. I think. I like all of them for many different reasons, but at the moment, I probably say which is going to be the next track that will be coming out as a second single, mm. "Escape to Peace." Escape to Peace. Yeah. yeah, I think that's grown on me a bit as well. That one. Because um, I think we all we all have that where you know we all go through. I think. As men, we don't really discuss discuss mental health and mm. and those type of things a lot. And um, we've all been through <clears throat> our ups and downs. Everyone you speak to, everyone puts on a brave face, but underneath it, you don't really know what they're going through. Mm. And we all escape to this kind of place of solitude or mm. feeling, mm. you know, trying to get rid of these demons you have bugging mm. you, whether it's bills or the mm. woman nagging in your ear, whatever it may be. And yeah, escape to peace is just about just coming to that place of peace within yourself, mm. that point of understanding, you know? It's a long way, it's a long way for some people, isn't it? Yes. Sometimes it's um, <clears throat> yeah. very much a, a journey based on childhood trauma and, sure. you know, things that, you know, life happens to people and it can be quite hard, can't it? Um, it's, it's, very, it's very important to address that. Mm-hmm. Um, have, you been through, have you been through any... You know, levels of... Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I've dealt with mental health. I'm not afraid to say that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but my spirituality and, and, you know, focusing on myself, that got me through that. So, like, in the last two and a half years, I've lost 14 family members. One, four, yeah. 14? Yeah, including my father, my father-in-law. During the period of recording this project, I lost about 10 people. Yeah, through different, many different things. Yeah, so, so yeah, I definitely dealt with a lot of stuff. And even before that, but that's just life, you know? Yeah, that's that's a very... Well, we've been losing a lot of people. I know know a lot of people who've passed away, not direct family from my my, um, side, but, yeah, I know a lot of people um, who I've known. Mm. uh, Suddenly, like, I'm hearing news. Oh, right, they're gone now, you know? It's, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mental health, you know, at the end of the day, we've all got a mental... Mm. We all need to keep it healthy. How can you, you know, an, an unexamined life isn't worth living, really, is it? Yeah, it's funny. It's like with the internet, like you can just diagnose yourself and, you know, the self helps and all these great yeah. things. It's like, yeah, how often do we actually use it for what it's meant to be there for? <laughs> yeah. If anything, it causes more trouble. It's generally, <laughs> it's generally like I'm McKenna or something, I can mm. make you rich. Or, yeah, or and shit like that. that. Yeah, yeah. But really, it's not, it's not that we need, you no. know? It's deeper yeah. than that, isn't it? What is it we, what we need? That's the problem, isn't it? That's what we're all searching for, mm. to find that that key to kind of keep that mm. you know, peace of mind and mental health in, in good shape. Mm. And, um, yeah. Suppose. And the country does it for you? Being the out country? in the country, the countryside? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm. It's, well, you're less kind of bombarded by um, people and, and information in the same way, but I suppose... T- most of my time living in London, I used to kind of like not notice people. The more people there were, the more hypnotic, hypnotic it became. Mm. So that I'd just be kind of like, there'd be hundreds of thousands of people around me and I'm just kind of like in my own realm doing my own thing and not really noticing them. <laughs> so in some know, ways... I um, can do with some of that. Yeah. <laughs> 
But I think in, in general, in terms of the air, the fresh air and being around nature and stuff, I've got dogs now, whippets, me and my partner, and she's got three kids, we've got two whippets, and yeah, to me, they're like my best friends, you know. Running them, whatever they're they really, going to stab me in the you, back in the you, same you way. You must be a really chilled dad. <laughs> I can imagine part two being a chill pops. You know what I mean? Oh, like, I don't know about that. <laughs> I can't imagine you. I can't. It's just, it's just oozing cool, isn't it? And that the deal, like you'd create a star. I'm cool. Virtue. I'm cool. But when people get at me, mm. I have a switch, <laughs> and it's kind of like you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we put you in the middle of the on. table, bro, just to restrain you. <laughs> I feel very <laughs> restrained. Are coming through, bro. I got, I got three lights on me. It's like global. If there's ever global warming, it's right here, and yeah, I'm the yeah. globe. I'm getting warmed up. <laughs> Centralized straight to the scalp. Yeah, man. <laughs> so it's coming out. When's it coming out, gentlemen? Very soon, isn't it? it must be yeah, this very month. Soon. This month, we're going to get this out. Yeah, pick pick a date. Yeah, just throw <laughs> up in the air, see where it goes. Good day, eh? yeah, we'll do to- toss some coins or no, bingo. Yeah, the other thing. Do bingo. <laughs> but um, no, I'm thinking, um, we're trying to land it around um, the-, the end of this month in line with um, payday. Because people ain't got much money these days at the moment, and um, we want people to hear this, want people to li- listen to it and enjoy it. That's right. So, yeah. Fucking right. So, what would do? This ain't the music business anymore. This is just, just real. Yeah, real talk. We're it's doing this stuff because because we have to. Yeah, we're not mm. trying to make a product and become rich off it. Or something mm. we just. I made a load of music. He wanted to write some stuff to that music. We formulated a project. And it's fun. That's it. And yeah. it's fun. Mm. That's it. Shouldn't be any deeper than that, should it? Yeah, mm. we just got to recoup our production costs. Yeah, yeah. That's it. It's the only reason there's a price on things. Yeah. Very much so. Um. So yeah, I'll go get that. We'll get all the links and everything we need from the boys' socials. Gentlemen, what an absolute pleasure to have you pass by. Oh, you're Thank welcome, you. man. Thank it's you. all good. My God. Always a pleasure, yes. man. Yes, Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, hot inside the place for those that you don't know, Nomadic and Part Two. Most definitely representing, keeping on, keeping on, and doing the right thing, sending the music out to the people far and wide of the created minds. Yes, yes, designed to simulate a more killer killer podcast out like in was out of fashion, all right? Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. Yeah. Remember, keep, keep it real. Keep it real. Peace. 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 <laughs>